Hello, everyone. I'm Amino and serve as an MC. Thank you very much for joining us today for the Hokkaido Online Tourism Seminar. This seminar is hosted by the Hokkaido Tourism Organization, and we'd like to share with you the latest attractions of Hokkaido to cater for today's main target, modern luxury. Hokkaido is located in the northernmost part of Japan, and its natural wildness and offers many attractive spots, including beautiful seasonal views, a wide variety of activities, gourmet food, and hot springs. Furthermore, the Adventure Travel World Summit ATWS 2023 is scheduled to be held in Hokkaido in September this year. And we hope that this seminar will provide you with the latest information to guide your clients. Now, Ms. Kaori Inoue, Manager of International Promotion Department of Hokkaido Tourism Organization, will make an opening address. それでは早速、主催の公益社団法人、北海道観光振興機構、海外遊客部、統括部長、井上香織様にご挨拶をいただきます。皆様、こんにちは。私は北海道観光振興機構の井上と申します。本日は、北海道観光セミナーにご参加いただき、誠にありがとうございます。今日参加されている皆様は北海道と聞いて何を思いますか中には何もイメージできないという方もいらっしゃると思います北海道は日本の一番北に位置しており独自の文化や景色があります日本の魅力度ランキング2022年で14年連続1位に選ばれている日本人には憧れの土地なのです広い大地手つかずの自然野生の動物温泉食行く先々で違う顔がありそして全てにおいて真の価値本物がありますそして何より四季がはっきりしていて空気が澄んでいますこのセミナーだけでは語り尽くせませんがきっとセミナー終了後には北海道のファンになっていることと思います皆様のお越しを心よりお待ちしています Thank you very much, Ms. Inoue Next, I'd like to invite the presenter, Mr. Kensuke Takada Deputy Director of Sales and Marketing International Project Team of Hotel Tsuruga Resort Group. And he will talk about why do we recommend Hokkaido. He joined Tsuruga Resort in 2012. Then they, they worked with, collaborated with the ATTA, Adventure Travel Trading Association. And then they made efforts to start up Japan Adventure Tourism Organization. Then later, he was appointed as the ATTA ambassador, official ambassador in 2020. He emceed Adventure Travel World Summit virtual and made efforts to work with the related firms and corporates and、uh, organizing the event. He will make a great contribute, contribution to Adventure Travel World Summit 2023 in Hokkaido. Then, Mr. Takada, please. Takada Fukubucho, よろしくお願いいたします。Thank you very much, Amino san, and good morning from Hokkaido. My name is Ken Takada, and I am the Deputy Director of Hotel Tsuruga Group. As Amino san told you guys, now I'm gonna tell you. Why you need to come to Hokkaido? So let's start our presentation. So the presentation s t a r t Okay, so this is my presentation, Hokkaido, and welcome to Japan's leading trip destination. So let's start from where is Hokkaido? 
Now, Hokkaido is a Japan's second largest island and comprises the largest and northernmost prefecture, making up its town, its own region. So, the pink part is Hokkaido, and the biggest island is the mainland Japan. The capital city is Sapporo, and subdivisions district, there's 74 of them, and there are 179 municipalities. And the population is total of 5,224,000 people, and that is equivalent to the main part of the Washington, D.C. in the USA, and a little bit less than St. Petersburg in Russia, and a little bit less than Spain, Barcelona. Now let's go to the geography of Hokkaido. The island of Hokkaido is located in the northern north of Japan. It's really close to Russia. You can see from the tip of the Hokkaido. It has, it has a coastline of the Sea of Japan, which is to the west of the island, and Sea of Okhotsk in the north, and the Pacific Ocean to the east. The center of the island is mountainous with volcano plateau. Now Hokkaido is 83,423.84 square kilometers, which is 32,210.12 square miles, which makes the second largest island of Japan. And also the island rank is 21st in the world by area. And some people knows that Hokkaido is a little bit smaller than Ireland, which is 84,421 square kilometers. So we can try a little bit better and maybe we can win the size one day. It's impossible, but just a joke. Now let's go to the Ainu people. Some people may have heard of them already, but I'll explain to you. The Ainu are the indigenous people of the lands surrounding the Sea of Okhotsk, including Hokkaido Island, Northeast Honshu Island, which is the main island of Japan, Sakhalin Island, and Kuril Islands, and Kamchatka Peninsula. And before the arrival of the Yamato Japanese and Russians, which means the Russians and the mainland Japanese, these regions are referred to as Ezo. Official estimated place the total Ainu population of Japan at 25,000 people. An official estimated place the total population at 200,000 or higher. As a near total assimilation of the Ainu into Japanese society has resulted in many individuals of Ainu descent having no knowledge of their ancestry. In 1966, there were about 300 na native Ainu speakers in 2008, however, there are about 100. So Ainu language is one of the two Japanese languages which is dying at the moment. But they are still managed to live in this area, in Hokkaido, and they are living up to the new type of presentation as well. So this is a new type of presentation called Los Kamui. They have a new type of presentation that you can see for the customer and the tourist in Lake Akan area. Now let's go deeper into the history of Hokkaido. Now, history of Hokkaido. During the Jomon period, the local culture and the associated hunter-gatherer lifestyle flourished in Hokkaido beginning over 15,000 years ago. In contrast to the island of Honshu, Hokkaido saw as absence of conflict during this time period. Jomon believes in nature, natural spirits are theorized to be an ori origins of Ainu spirituality. Their lifestyle is now under the spotlight because of the recent SDGs movement. And Amino-san was mentioned about Adventure Travel World Summit 2023. The main theme is going to be Kyosei, which means symbiosis with nature and cultural wise. So as a photograph you can see in this slide, these are the so-called hollow dogu and the German artifacts in the photograph. So dogu is a clay figurine 
of the late German period. Now a little bit go nearer into the current age. Hokkaido was formerly known as Ezo, as I mentioned before. Hokkaido was considered foreign territory that was inhabited by indigenous people of the island, known as Ainu people. The Japanese settlers began their migration to Hokkaido in the 17th century, which often result in clashes and revolts between Japanese and Ainu populations. In 1869, following the Meiji rest Restoration, Ezo was annexed by Japan under ongoing colonial practices and renamed to Hokkaido. After these events, Japanese settlers start to colonize the island. While Japanese settlers colonized the island, the Ainu people were dispossessed uh, of their land, forced to ass assimilate and aggressively discriminated against by the Japanese settlers. So as you can see on the old picture and the photograph in the left-hand side, the samurai warrior is getting receiving some, you know, fish from the Ainu people. So this was happening in the old time. So now let's talk about the history of Hokkaido, Mr. Matsura Takeshiro, known as Takeshiro Matsura. He was Japanese explorer, writer, painter, priest, an antiquarian. During the late Edo period and Bakumatsu, which is the end of Edo period, he joined six times to Ezo, including Sakhalin and Kurilis. In the early Meiji period, he was an official in the Hokkaido Development Commission, instrumental in the naming of the island of its place. He sometimes referred as a God partner, godparent of Hokkaido. So he is a namer of the Hokkaido. As I talk to the Ainu friend of mine, what do you think about the uh, naming of Hokkaido and founding of the Hokkaido? The Ainu people said there was way before there. Hokkaido was before the naming, so there's not much of it. It was a very, in, in, very important talk and interesting talk with Ainu people about this. So this, uh, there is a mixed emotion about that. Now let's talk about the seasons of Hokkaido. So Japan is well known about having four seasons. So spring and summer, autumn, and finally winter. I hope some of you find a very famous and most favorite picture from all four of them. But Hokkaido is a very, very big island. So there are different seasons in a different region. They will divide it into five regions. So there's one in southern area. The Pacific type climate, relatively mild compared to the other areas in Hokkaido. The urban area, such as Hakodate, has relatively little snow. While the mountains area accumulates heavy snow, the blooming season of the cherry blossom begins the earliest in Hokkaido. On the photograph left, uh, right, you will see the photograph of Hakodate, which we called $1 million night lights. I'll explain to you later, but this is a good photograph. Now let's go to the central area. It is a relatively mild in the nearby Sapporo, but it, in winter it becomes windy and has heavy, heavy snow. In Niseko and the foot of Mount Yote, the brisk highland weather lasts in summer and has heavy snow in winter. Now let's go to the Taisetsu Tokachi area. The Taisetsu and has a Inland climate where the temperature is high in summer while it is severely cold in winter. The snow accumulation level is the highest in the Hokkaido, also in the Tokachi area. The temperature is high summer and cold in winter. However, it does not snow much. Now let's go to the eastern area, which I came from. It has an East Pacific climate where fog is generated in summer. It is cool even in the summer and the temperature 
drastically change during the day. All through the snow accumulation level is low, it is severely cold, causing lakes and rivers to freeze. Drifting ice can be seen on the side of the Sea of Ohotsk. Now finally, the northern area. It is rel relatively cold even in summer. In winter, the temperature drops low in the inland area and has a heavy, heavy snow. Now we talk about the seasons of Hokkaido. Let's talk about the nature in Hokkaido. As you've seen a few photographs already about the nature of Hokkaido, let's talk about deeper and deeper. Let's talk about the national parks. Now the national parks of Hokkaido. Hokkaido has multiple protected areas, including six national parks. All natural parks, including the national parks areas, are established in about 10% of the total land area of Hokkaido Prefecture. There is the Akamashu National Park, which I came, which I came from, and Daisetsuzan National Park, and Shikotsu Toya National Park, and Shiretoko National Park, which is designated as a World Heritage Site by UNESCO on 2005, and Rishiri Rebun Sarobetsu National Park and Kushiro Shitsugen National Park. So as you can see on the photograph on the right, the, all the blue parts are the national, national park and the green parts is quasi-national park. So you can see why the 10% are covered in national parks and the protected area. I don't, I, cannot, I don't have a time to cover all the information about the national parks, but I'll take a few information for you guys. Now, number one, Akamashu National Park. I cannot skip this one because I came from here. A vast landscape comprising Japan's largest caldera landforms, volcanoes, forests, and lakes, and designated in December 4th, 1934. It's located in the eastern part of Hokkaido. Akamashu National Park is one of the longest established parks in Hokkaido. Most of the park area is covered in natural forest comprising mainly subarctic mixed forest that is said to be some of the most prim primeval forest of all the national parks in Japan. So the next one is a Daisetsuzan National Park. The roof of the central Hokkaido, known locally as Kamui Mintara, or the playground of the gods in Ainu language. Now, Daisetsuzan National Park is located in the central part of Hokkaido, sometimes referred to as the roof of Hokkaido. The area designated as a national park, including the Daisetsuzan volcanic group of, that accumulates in Mount Asahidake, which is the Hokkaido's highest peak at 2,291 meters above the sea level. Finally, I will explain about the Shiretoko National Park. Now, Shiretoko National Park is a rich ecosystem linked by ice drifts and majestic landscapes and mountains and coastal cliffs created by volcanic eruption. The name Shiretoko derives from the Ainu phrase Shiretok, meaning end of the earth. The true to its name, the Shiretoko area is located on the most northern eastern point of Japan which excluding the Northern Territories. Now, I only explain three of them, but if you want to know more about the national parks and nature, please visit Ministry of Environment website. Now you know there is a nature, I will, I will like to talk about adventure. So there's a seasonal adventure in every part of Hokkaido. Who likes rafting? It goes down the very strong river, and you can enjoy the strong river and the beautiful water of Hokkaido. But if you're not that active, let's try canoeing. You can go down the gentle stream. If you want, don't want to go to the water, let's go to the mountain, like a mountain climbing. This is a mountain climbing photograph of Mount Meakan, which I came from. And if you just go to the top of the Meakan, you can see the majestic view like this. It is active, so you have to be careful. Or if you are not, are not that active, you can just go to the forest bathing. 
and the forests of Hokkaido. As I mentioned, it is one of the most primeval forests in Hokkaido, Japan, so please enjoy. Uh, this is a you can enjoy activities in summer and, summer and spring, so let's go to the winter. Winter season, some of the lake in Hokkaido just freeze, so you just can go top of the ice and you can just enjoy your imaginative feelings. You just go on the top of the ice, you just jump up and you just go for the morning cafe. If you want to go to the ocean side, you can go to the drift ice, drift ice breaking boat. And if you are really adventurous, you just go deep into the ocean. You're surrounded by a drift ice. It is dangerous activity, but if you go with a special guide in Shiretoko area and Rausu area, you can enjoy safely. Now let's talk about the access to the Hokkaido. As you can see, there are 10 airports in Hokkaido, which covers most of the Hokkaido areas. So if you want to come from Hokkaido, from Japanese other airports, there's a very strong connections to each airports. And main airports in Hokkaido is New Chitose Airport in the Orange area. This is the fifth biggest airport and most, one of the most busiest airport in Japan. So access to Hokkaido, there are domestic flight and international flight. So before the COVID, there was a quite a lot of numbers of the incoming flight and outgoing flight. So total of 15, 000, uh, 150,000 flights in Japan annually to the New Chitose Airport, the main airport of Hokkaido. Currently in last year, after the corona, it's going back to domestic flight, 179 of them, and inside Hokkaido, there's 17 of them. And for the international flight, it used to be 24 lines and 228 flights, but it will coming back recently, and now it's going to Seoul in Korea, Daegu, Busan, Taipei, Bangkok, Hong Kong, Kuala Lumpur, and Singapore. So another access to Hokkaido is Japan Railway, we know as the JR. This is a Hokkaido road map. As you can see, it covers most of the Hokkaido. So if you want to come to the north, if you want to go to the north, south, east, it's covered by JR. And also if you want to come to Hokkaido by Shinkansen, the bullet train, it is connected from Hachinohe in Aomori Prefecture. Now the Shinkansen is now trying to stretch into the Sapporo area, but it will come in a few sometime in future. Now we don't have much time left, so let's talk about the charms of Hokkaido. The reason why I'm doing this presentation is I'm telling you why this is suitable for the, all the customers, including the high-end customer as well. One of the Hokkaido's charm is the hotel and ryokan in the area. There's a multiple four-star, five-star ryokan and hotel, which has a Michelin guide for Hokkaido its own itself. Not, on, not Michelin guide Japan, but Michelin guide Hokkaido. The latest one is 2017. It was updated, so please take a look. And of course, another charm of Hokkaido is a food. Hokkaido's food, including a seafood and the meat. This is called Genghis Khan, which is a lamb barbecue. It's a favorite for the Hokkaido people. And a hot pot. Of course, every winter we do the hot pot so we can get warm. And a very well-known salmon. This dish is called chan chan yaki. So very delicacy of the Hokkaido's local delicacy. And another one, of course, the crab and the pork. And nobody can forget the ice cream. My favorite ice cream. There's not enough of it. 
There's always an ice cream in every area of Hokkaido. So if you want to go for a dairy product, this is a place you can go. So I hope you enjoyed and you learned something about Japan Hokkaido. And if you have any kind of question, I hope you will find out by yourself when you arrive to the Hokkaido. So thank you very much and see you all in Hokkaido. 皆様どうもありがとうございました。Mr. Takada, thank you very much for the informative inform- presentation. And next, we'd like to show you two videos to convey the charm of Hokkaido. どうぞご覧ください。A hint of fresh air, cool and invigorating, backdropped by a picturesque landscape and the soft embrace of serenity. The freedom, so up here. your freedom, stretches across pristine pine peaks to the stunning sapphire sea. This is Hokkaido, a natural paradise. But more than anything, It is the remarkable people of this peaceful land who make it such a genuinely beautiful place. Immerse in the centuries old culture of the indigenous Ainu people. Learn of their ways, their music, their customs. A myriad of inspirational tales and myths from long ago are told through meticulous works of art and fine craftsmanship. Tight? Yeah, they look like How long it takes to build the whole thing. Imagine their lifestyle and experience the sacred rituals that have been passed down from generation to generation. Feel the spirit of this fascinating island pulse in every beat. Each choreographed step woven together as intricate and vibrant as the patterns on the traditional robes the Ainu adorn. Surrounded by ocean and blessed with fertile grounds, Hokkaido offers a bountiful harvest and rich variety of ingredients year round. The tranquility is touched by the heart and soul of an elder, generously sharing her decades of intimate wisdom amidst the yellow glow of the setting sun. Come, discover the secrets for yourself, where the gentle whispers of the forest meet the contemporary amenities of city life. Savor the skillful artistry of the northern prefecture's renowned winemakers and master sommeliers. Paired with world class cuisines using the freshest of local ingredients. I think so, yeah. I think it's from around here, right? Sample the smooth warmth of Ezo and then. Slowly, return to exceptional comforts for the evening, highlighted by the synergistic contrast of past and modernity. Welcome to Hokkaido, the hidden jewel of Japan. Iran Karapte. Hokkaido has so many exotic, naturally beautiful scenic areas. A special experience awaits you here. Let us introduce you to its charm. Hokkaido gets over 15 meters of snowfall annually. And the fluffy white powder snow attracts skiers and snowboarders from all around the world. 
the wild outdoor conditions are ideal for backcountry adventures. Climb the majestic snowy mountains. Feel the soft, deep snow as you carve some fresh tracks. It's one of the most amazing experiences. Snow trekking is a great way to enjoy the wilderness of Hokkaido with no special skills required. Come and experience nature in its full glory. Hokkaido has one of the most biologically diverse ecosystems in Japan and is considered top class globally. It is also known around the world as one of the best photography locations for wildlife observation and bird watching. During the winters, you can experience some of the greatest encounters with wildlife in Hokkaido. The unique culture of the indigenous Ainu people is centered around living in harmony with nature, as with the Jormon people that came before them. Hokkaido is not just about nature, the people, culture and delicious food each have their own appeal. Get in touch with nature. Encounter wild animals. Drift ice walking. Japanese pond smelt ice fishing. Ice climbing. Taste local foods made with local ingredients. Hokkaido is one of the world's leading destinations for adventure travel. Join us in giving travelers the best experience possible. I hope you all enjoyed these videos. Hokkaido has four distinct seasons to enjoy. As you saw in the video, the magnificent nature in summer the ex exquisite gourmet food using local ingredients, the unique local culture, winter sports, and the once-in-a-lifetime spectacular scenery that can only be seen here in Hokkaido. There are still many undiscovered charms. It is like the hidden jewel of Japan. Next, I'd like to have a presenter, and Mr. Masatoshi Noguchi, General Manager of the International Travel Division of Nippon Travel Agency Hokkaido. The trustee of this project will introduce the routes he has carefully selected and recommended for you. So, Mr. Noguchi, please. Noguchi-sama, dozo yoroshiku o negai itashimasu. Amino-san, arigatou gozaimasu. Thank you very much, Mr. Amino. Uh, I'm Noguchi, I'm from uh, Nippon Travel Agency, and uh, today I'm going to make a presentation for two courses, um, regular travel model courses, I mean. So let's start the presentation. Today I'd like to introduce you to sample courses of Hokkaido. The first course is about Hokkaido's unique indigenous people living in harmony with nature and a trip around the Jomon period. So this is our itinerary and uh, first travel will be a travel around the south part of Hokkaido. Please check the itinerary later. So let us start the tour with new attraction in Hokkaido. It is a new national museum called Upopoi, located in Shilawoi town, 40 minutes drive from the new Titose airport. Open July 2020 for learning about Ainu and promoting their history and culture. The Ainu are indigenous people from the northern region of the Japanese archipelago 
particularly Hokkaido. Their culture is so distinctive. Their language, dance performance, and craft of wood carving and embroidery with a unique pattern. We could say this is a place for mutual respect based on the coexistence which developed over many years in Hokkaido nature. Accommodation. Let me suggest you the new luxury hotel for this tour by the Lake Poroto in Upopoi area for your tour base. I recommend you to stay three nights at Kai Poroto for this luxury tour where you have relaxing lake view. Also, there are various services you can fully enjoy the hot spring bathing during your stay. Their western room is 56 square meters with private outdoor baths with featuring ornamentation patterned with traditional Ainu motifs. This is the standard Kaisik course meal. The sashimi is seasoned with a wide variety of condiments. Enjoy to your heart's content this meal made of individual dishes, each one carefully paying homage to the cultural roots of its place of origin. We can say this is a meal that you can enjoy not only the taste, but also how they look. Visit on day two. May I introduce the small Ainu historical town called Biratoli Town. Biratoli is a town of the Ainu people who have lived in harmony with the nature of the Saru River Basin. Traditional culture has been passed down from generation to generation, including traditional Ainu dance, Nibutani Ita and Nibutani Atushi, which were designated as traditional crafts for the first time in Hokkaido. There are many facilities where you can enjoy learning about its history and culture, such as the Nibutani Ainu Cultural Museum and the Kaya no Shigeru Nibutani Ainu Museum. Lunch and experience. There is local restaurant in Biratoli where you can enjoy Ainu cuisine for lunch. Deer soup, wild vegetable dishes, a very special treat for you, and it'll be the luxury experience which you cannot have in other places in the world. Experience. In Nibutani Ainu Cultural Museum, you can experience wood carving and embroidery under the direct guidance of the masters. You can make the only one wood carving by your own. You'll say, this is a quality time for your trip. So, day three, an experience. It's time to change your mood and refresh yourself with an outdoor experience. Lake Toya, the lake made by active volcano. People enjoy the various four seasons in nature sanctuary. Let's canoeing leisurely on the surface of the lake and don't haste. You'll be fine a different scenery from the usual. Lunch. For lunch on this day, we serve plenty of local pesticide-free vegetables for you. The secret to the deliciousness of Rake Toya's vegetables lies in the volcano ash. The history of repeated active volcano eruptions is also the history of fertile soil. In the afternoon, we will visit the Volcano Science Museum. Mount Usu, located in Lake Toya, has erupted nine times since 1663. It is called the mountain that never lies. Because this mount elapses regularly and people can foresee them, and not a single person has died from its eruptions. Here you can learn how the people of Toya live in harmony with an active volcano. Trekking Mount Usu is popular as an observatory for tourists, and a new observation tells us 
has been built. Also, we can arrange a special guided walking tour along the outer limb trail. Toya area is known as a home to the Irie Takasago Shell Mound, one of the World Heritage Site of Hokkaido Tohoku Jomo Monuments. Shellfish, fish bones, animal bones, bone horn tools such as fish hooks and harpoons were found. And we can tell that the eruption bay in front of Toya and the forest behind brought abundant blessings. One of the first day, you will also visit the World Heritage Site of the Jomon Ruins Kita Kogane Kaizuka. Day 4. Near Toya, there is Date Museum of History and Culture in Date Town. We can learn about the history, culture, and nature of Hokkaido, which is distinct from Honshu, the main island of Japan. You can feel about the history of cultural introduction from Honshu and learn about the history of Hokkaido's unique culture through this museum. This is the end of the first recommendation tour. How about to finish it with fresh and tasty soba noodle at the Michelin One Star? We are pretty sure that you will enjoy the luxury of knowing things you didn't know and enjoying the blessings of the nature on this trip. So, next recommendation tour is for the winter season. Hokkaido is a treasure trove of nature and wildlife. Let's focus this on unspoiled nature and wildlife in the East Hokkaido. This tour will travel around the southeastern part of Hokkaido, like this. Day one and dinner and accommodation. We recommend you gateway of this course is Nakashibetsu Airport, which also has direct flights from Haneda Airport in Tokyo. From the airport, we moved to Rao's town with 90 minutes car ride, where we overnight for morning drift ice cruise. For dinner, we suggest to enjoy a Japanese style meal, including seasonal sashimi of local flesh fish. You must experience the clues in Laos, where you can see drift ice and the Steelers sea eagles and the white-tailed sea eagles at the same time. The clues is available for private charter, so you can take photos at your own timing from a good vantage point on this ship. Hot beverages and snacks will be provided on board. In winter, in Hokkaido, there are not many feasts better than ramen. Experience Speaking of Rouse, Rouse kelp is well known. Speaking of kelp, we must not forget about the dashi, broth, which is the basis of Japanese food. We suggest, we suggest to experience Shaping kelp. Running with local fishermen about a fishing kelp will spark not only the local industry, but also your interest in Japanese food. Hokkaido boasts a fishing kelp of 90-60% in whole Japan. We probably can say that without Laos's kelp, Kyoto cuisine would not be possible. I have nothing to say about the sushi in Hokkaido. On the day three, experience. We moved to Lake Kusharo, the largest caldera lake in Japan. Lake Kusharo is a volcanically active lake, and many hot springs are found along its shores. 
This lake is very attractive for its large scale and magnificent scenery. And also, you may see frozen lake and swans. Accommodation. We absolutely recommend to stay at the Tsuruga Beso Hinanoza by the Lake Akam. This hotel accommodates you the suite room with private outdoor baths with excellent kaiseki dishes. Day 4 visit. Have you seen the Red Clan Clans? The Red Clan Clans are known as a special natural treasure of Japan and the valuable migratory birds that visit the Kushiro wetlands to nest in winter. We will bring you the special viewpoints where you can see and touch the nesting sites as an early morning secret tour. The popular park Eto Sanctuary is a facility run by the Worldwide Society of Japan, established to protect red clown clans and their habitat. We will also enjoy snowshoeing in the area around Lake Toro. Walking on the frozen lakes allows you to enjoy landscapes that you can't see in summer. Day 4. Lunch. How about the hamburger steak of deer meat? Deer meat dishes are currently attracting a lot of attention as a meal that co coexist with nature and health consciousness. In addition, the number of young deer hunters has been increasing year by year. I believe that will be good opportunities to think about coexistence with nature in Hokkaido. In winter, there are sudden changes in the weather, so such a guide center is an important base for supporting winter tourism. Dinner is served sometimes at a local izakaya, Japanese taverns. Local taverns are important tourist desti destinations that convey the culture of the area. Please enjoy the dishes made with fresh ingredients by the local people. Day 5. Experience. We suggest you to the snowshoeing for nature and bird watching in Kushiro Marsh. The great advantage of this is easy accessing in the mid of the forest. That is because ragged forests in summer can be easily entered by snowshoes in winter. In Kushiro City, we will serve the lunch at the soba, buckwheat noodle historical restaurant, which was established in 1874 and has a history of more than 130 years. Please enjoy a taste different from Michelin One Star. You can get a lot of knowledge about the wildlife that inhabits Hokkaido here at the Kushiro Marshland Wildlife Conservation Center. Many nature lovers from all over the world gather here in the Kushiro area to see many wild animals. Let's finish your winter tour in Hokkaido with Robatayaki dinner. By the way, fatty hokke and mackerel go very well with Kushiro's local Japanese sake. That is the end of presentation. I'll be very happy if you could be more interested in Hokkaido than ever before. See you Hokkaido soon and thank you very much. ありがとうございました. Thank you very much, Mr. Noguchi. We hope that you all find it very useful and informative. This concludes today's seminar. Thank you very much for your time and I would like to make two important announcements. First, the, you will receive 
that the URL for the survey of the seminar via chat. And it is highly appreciated if you could fill out the questionnaire before you leave the Zoom. We will also email you questionnaire later. Second, the today's seminar will be posted on the official YouTube site of the Hokkaido Tourism Organization. If you like to watch it again, please check it out. And for your information, a questionnaire and YouTube URL QR code will be displayed on the screen for the time being after the seminar concludes. Lastly, we sincerely look, for, look forward to welcome, welcoming you and in Hokkaido. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Goodbye.